has a really strong Potawatomi presence. Mm -hmm. um, Many moves. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look, we actually, at my job at the casino, we talk about this in our orientation for all of our new employees, and we show a map of all the land that was Potawatomi land prior to colonization versus now, mm -hmm. and it's like three little dots. Mm -hmm. So it used to span all the way from like Minnesota and Wisconsin through Indiana and Illinois yeah. and Ohio, and now we have three little dots along with yeah. Michigan. Yeah. Um, and I think what's really upsetting about this country and this area in general mm -hmm. is that they like to pretend that the Indian wars are in the past mm -hmm. and that stuff isn't happening mm -hmm. anymore, but it very much is. Mm -hmm. And so there's kind of a refusal to acknowledge it or talk about it because if they do, mm -hmm. they're gonna have to do something about it. Mm -hmm and they're gonna have to, it's gonna be really uncomfortable mm -hmm. and no one wants to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Right, so if you look back to the beginning, mm -hmm. um, to the Indian Removal Acts, I think some schools, not every, but a lot of schools talk about the Trail of Tears and mm -hmm. some people are familiar with that. Uh, the Potawatomi people, we had our own, which is called the Trail of Death. And so basically what had happened, just like with a lot of other indigenous communities, mm -hmm was the, the government, essentially the United States, saw that we had land and that it could be profitable for them. And so they said, okay, well, you're gonna leave this land and you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. um, and so they rounded up a bunch of Potawatomi people and moved them out west. Mm -hmm. um, and people died as a result of this. Um, you'll also find a Potawatomi community in Oklahoma now um, as a direct result of the Indian Removal Act. Mm -hmm. um, but our leader at the time, he saw what was happening and he understood that if our people were forced to move, it meant that our people were going to die. Mm -hmm. um, and we have very strong religious connections to this land. We believe the creator told us to be here. Um, and so to leave was really just not really an option. Yeah. And so um, Paul Kagan, he went to the Catholic church up near Detroit um, and he had asked for help. You know, help us not have to leave. We'll do whatever we have to do. And at first, the Catholic Church didn't want to get involved because they believe it was a Baptist presence mm -hmm. um, in this area, and they didn't want to start beef essentially mm -hmm. um, with the other with the other church. Mm -hmm. And so at first, they didn't want to help. But then, um, okay, again, he got on his knees and he recited the Lord's Prayer in Potawatomi, and that was really moving um, to the Catholic Church. And so they decided to get involved and to help. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically they had to strike a deal and that deal said that if you want to stay here um you know your boys you're gonna have to cut their hair you're gonna have to send your kids to to schools to become good catholics essentially yeah. you're gonna have to live in a modern world and you're gonna have to do away with your savage roots um and so that's what they did with the hopes the idea being that one day we could rise back up and go back to that traditional way of being but right now we have to survive um, and that's actually where Notre Dame comes from, as out of that field. Um, educate yourselves about who we are. If you Google search Native Americans, a lot of the images that come up are those antiquated photos of like Plains Indians. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no such thing as a pan Indian. There are over 500 indigenous nations in the United States alone. And that's not including Canada and Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are all different. We all have our own languages and religions and beliefs and practices and so educate yourself about the people whose land you're currently occupying and when we when we think about it's really sad because we think about the founding of this country people can tell you about your founding fathers and about Columbus and about all these other European um, players in this game but they can't really tell you about you know Crazy Horse or Sitting Bull or Leopold Kilkagan um, you know, mm -hmm. and if they do know about these people, all they know is, you know, reservation Indians and drunk Indians. Mm -hmm. um, but really, indigenous people today, we owe our lives to those drunk Indians mm -hmm. because what happened in these boarding, I mean, you look at, they survived reservations and then they, the children were scooped up and snatched starting in the 60s, all the way to the 90s, like this is modern. The children were being snatched out of their homes and sent to these residential schools. And you can hear stories of people who survived them talking about, you know, watching their friend get his tongue cut out of his head for speaking his language. Or there's an elder who talks about she was raped by a Catholic priest and forced to give birth to that baby. And then they threw that baby into an incinerator in front of her. And she was just a child herself. Like, 
it was horrific what happened to indigenous people here. And I mean, you can read like Hitler when he wrote his book, he talks about how he modeled his uh, concentration camps off of indigenous reservations and the things that were happening to our people here. And there's like, no one knows, no one will acknowledge it um, and no one will learn about it. And so these, you know, these people, they survived and they grew up and they knew that they couldn't be indigenous because they would be killed for it but they didn't want to be like the oppressor. And so instead they just drank and got through it. You know what I mean? Um, and so I kind of want to rework people's perception of us. Um, you know, yeah, you have the drunk Indians that happen, but wouldn't, wouldn't you, if you know, those things happen to you, wouldn't you drink too? Yeah. Um, and they did their time and they survived. And now we've got, they did it for the next seven generations so that we could pass them. Yeah. And so what I really want people the goal of this, what I really want people to do is to start at the beginning. The truth about what happened in this country, it's uncomfortable and it's horrific and it's really hard to hear and to see it because it still happens today. It's hard to witness that, but you have to because if you don't, it's just going to continue happening and it's going to get worse. Um, and indigenous people, we have so much to contribute. You know, we have, we're, we're brilliant people. We have doctors and lawyers and teachers and, you know, brilliant business people who are functioning in modern society and they're doing it and they're tying in our old ways of being at the same time. And it's working, you know, so learn about that as well. Many moons ago, I lived in the snow. I sat with this fire and gave thanks.